everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, this afternoon's keynote speak, the, um, the last day of the, uh, the Drupal conference. Um, my name is Greg Anders. I'm from uh, a company called Ice Media. Uh, we're a digital services agency, full service agency, kind of based in Brisbane. Uh, none of our clients are based in Brisbane, or virtually none, so we tend to uh, work with people all over the place. It's been a good way for us to attract really good talent, people who want a lifestyle but want to work on some good national accounts. So that's enough talking about Ice Media. So I'm going to introduce this afternoon uh, Neil Drum. Neil's going to give the uh, keynote speech. Um, Neil is a Drupal.org architect. Uh, he's been a member of Drupal.org for the last, or for at least 16 years. Over the last 12 months, there's uh, nearly 200 fixes that uh, Neil's committed. Um, and he's going to talk about how Drupal.org is built. And uh, I think it's going to be really important for everyone, because without Drupal.org, we probably wouldn't any of us be here at uh, today's conference. Um, so uh, Drupal.org, a couple of interesting stats, uh, 20 million plus, plus page views over the last 12 months oh, per month. Per month. Ooh. So even more impressive, 140 million, we should say. Um, and uh, 2 million unique uh, visits per month. So that's pretty impressive stats. So Neil's going to talk about how Drupal.org is built, and I'd like you to uh, give him a warm welcome to the stage. He's here from the, uh, the States. Thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, do a uh, talk a bit about what I do at the Drupal Association. Uh, so, yeah, my job is to work on Drupal.org. Uh, I started uh, getting involved with Drupal.org probably around 2006 or 2007. Uh, that's, uh, I was interested in API.Drupal.org. Um, and I, my thinking was, you know, you have a big database of code, uh, could probably use something interesting with that, uh, but then ended up rewriting all of the parsing because it was a pile of regular, regular expressions before. Um, and at some point uh, in the mid-2000s, uh, uh, Dries asked if I wanted to have SSH access to the server. Uh, I think it was just one server at the time, because uh, he was going skiing for a couple weeks. <laughs> uh, so nothing went wrong. I didn't have to do anything, but I had, have S had SSH access and kept that since then. Uh, and that was all as a volunteer. Uh, I was contracting and uh, working on various sites at the, at the time. Uh, so I started getting paid to work on Drupal.org uh, as a contractor uh, in 2009-2010. Uh, uh, the board had done a uh, redesign of the site. Uh, had con uh, worked with Mark Bolton to redesign the site. And uh, it turns out if you have 10 mock-ups of a website and tell volunteers to do it, they don't just magically do it. Uh, so the association started contracting with a few people, including me. Uh, and uh, so we got that launched in 2010. Uh, also was uh, upgrading uh, Drupal.org. I think it was upgrading to Drupal 6, maybe 7 at that point. Uh, so now we uh, have four people on staff on the Drupal Association engineering team. Uh, there's uh, also uh, Tim Lennon, uh, Hestinat, uh, he's our CTO. Uh, Brendan Blaine uh, goes by uh, Bman on Drupal.org. Uh, he's a developer, does uh, kind of all the IT support, like orders people, uh, people laptops, and uh, uh, we're all remote, so he can I'd be sympathetic about people's Wi-Fi problems, but you can't really go to everyone's house and fix their Wi-Fi. Uh, and uh, he does uh, support as well. Uh, so if you email help at drupal.org, uh, there's a good chance he's going to be the one answering your question. Uh, and Ryan Aslett, uh, uh, Mixologic, he's a developer services engineer uh, and myself. Uh, and we also contract with uh, Tag1 Consulting for infrastructure support. Um, they help us with configuration management, provisioning servers, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, mostly Narayan Newton is our uh, contact there. Uh, have a couple other people, uh, Tag1, who help out as well. 
And uh, Michael Hess uh, has done uh, quite a bit of volunteer work, uh, even uh, sets up our, uh, set up our JIRA installation for our kind of internal organizing. Uh, he's also on the infrastructure uh, working, uh, working group and security working group. Uh, so yeah, uh, we build uh, Drupal.org. There's also some volunteer contributions, of course. Uh, and, uh, but it's not really, it's not just the one site, one Drupal site, it's uh, uh, eight websites. Uh, Association.drupal.org. Um, Right now, it's mainly used for the uh, board elections, uh, electing the community uh, seat on the board, uh, a couple community seats. Uh, API.drupal.org, the API reference. Uh, Events.drupal.org uh, for the Drupal cons. Uh, and groups, uh, that's still on Drupal 6. Uh, so we need to get that upgraded at some point. Uh, we have a job board uh, for hiring uh, Drupal talent, getting your resume and getting your resume out there. Uh, localized for translating Drupal software itself, so translating core and modules and distributions. Uh, and security at Drupal.org for uh, coordinating security issues. Uh, it's kind of a separate uh, issue tracker for um, contacting the people who can responsibly disclose things to us, and then we go to the module maintainer, whoever's responsible, and uh, communicate that. And, Hopefully they fix the issue. Uh, and there's more than that. Uh, we also have services. Uh, Drupal.org is, um, you know, Drupal sites will uh, come to Drupal.org for, uh, you know, yeah, downloading Drupal itself, uh, downloading contributed projects, uh, composer endpoint. Uh, so, uh, you know, Drupal projects are not, they predate uh, composer. So. Uh, getting everything po uh, posted to a packages-like thing uh, that we host. Translation files, uh, if you want to download the translations from localized.drupal.org uh, and run them on your site. And uh, uh, developer tools, so the GitLab migration uh, earlier this year and um, stuff like Drupal CI. Uh, and then we're adding a couple more things uh, on top of all of that work. Uh, Drupal Steward, that will be a um, kind of a web application firewall to help uh, protect your site from uh, vulnerabilities that are being disclosed. Uh, and, you know, uh, when they're as being announced, so you don't have to update your site right away, uh, if it's the sort of thing that you can. Um, block with the web application firewall. And uh, iMac updates are in heavy development right now. Um, there's a few, um, a few Drupal.org dependencies for that. Uh, so I'm personally working on iMac updates quite a bit. Uh, I'll get a little technical, technical about uh, the sort of things that uh, we're providing for iMac updates. Uh, so first of all, uh, you want, uh, we want sites to be able to choose when they want to update. Uh, so the kind of the main goal initially is if there's a big security uh, issue coming up, um, something highly critical like a, a code injection uh, that's easily exploitable or a SQL injection, uh, the rate's highly critical by the security team, uh, we always do a public service announcement beforehand uh, to tell people, you probably should actually stay, stay awake this Wednesday, whatever time zone you're in. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, those things, that's a prime target for our Mac updates. Uh, the whole system will, of course, work for any update, but uh, maybe you wanna uh, do other updates on your own time. And, so we're building API to make that, uh, make that public service announcement, announcement uh, machine readable uh, for the automatic updates client. Uh, so the main work here was done by Michael Hess. Uh, I reviewed and de uh, deployed it, uh, did a few fixes. And uh, yeah, basically it's a drush command that will uh, uh, pop something like this out to a uh, file and uh, clear the, CDN cache of it. Uh, so now that 
once your site knows that there's an update coming up, uh, we also want to know if your, um, if your site actually can be updated. Uh, so there's a few readiness checks. Uh, one of the big ones is you want to know if your site has been uh, uh, locally patched or has any changes, uh, because those things, the, this initial version of automatic updates, they won't be able to carry your patches forward. So uh, we, we're build, building an API that's basically the SHA sums of every file and every release. Uh, so you can, um, uh, your site can determine if any patches have been applied, uh, if anything doesn't match those uh, SHA sums of um, all the files. Uh, and it'll let you know if, um, if your site is, you know, it won't update your site if it, there are local changes. Uh, and we're also signing all of this uh, data. Um, so uh, David Strauss, Peter Volanen, and Mike Baton, uh, Banton, um, they uh, came up with a change signature format. Uh, that's the first uh, seven or eight lines of this. Um, and it's basically based on BSD's uh, Signify, so we're not inventing our own cryptography, but we're adding a uh, intermediate, um, intermediate key, kind of like, um, like X509 or something. I, I'm not a uh, crypto, uh, cryptographer, so I don't know the exact details. Uh, and um, they also uh, implement a uh, PHP library to do the verifying this sign signature. Uh, so all of that, uh, uh, that header that goes onto the data, uh, that will be a new VM that only does that, keep it isolated from the rest of the infrastructure. Uh, we'll get some uh, HSMs, uh, hardware signing modules to uh, keep the root keys, so we keep those off the internet, uh, and keeping everything isolated from each other. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm working on pretty much right now. Uh, do a little bit of investigating uh, on that yesterday. Um, Mike Baton, uh, again, uh, wrote some software to automate this that we can set up on the VM that uh, we have ready now. And uh, yeah, since it is intermediate, intermediate keys, uh, the root keys stored offline, we'll be able to rotate it every quarter, whatever, we, uh, whatever seems safe. Uh, and then the actual update itself. Uh, once the site knows that uh, there's an update coming up and your site is in a state that can be updated, uh, uh, this phase we're having it uh, download just the changed files and a list of the um, files that have been, uh, been deleted from release, release to release. Uh, so this initial one is for people who just have files on a server somewhere. If you have a deployment workflow, um, you know, storing stuff in Git, uh, deploying via Composer, this, this isn't uh, for you that we're kind of targeting the, um, the sites with less, uh, less infrastructure around them, because uh, those are the ones that don't get updated. Uh, so, yeah, I'm building, I built the service which, uh, Packages these up, signs them with the same uh, same signing infrastructure, uh, and uh, yeah, basically the Drupal.org will give you the uh, uh, the zip file of all of that uh, for any combination of releases for any project, and then the iMac updates client will um, will download that. And the client is a. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Drupal module right now uh, for seven and eight. Uh, Lucas Heading uh, is doing all the work on that, uh, thanks to him and the European Commission for uh, sponsoring it. Uh, it just got to uh, beta a few days ago. Um, and yeah, right now, you know, it is very much in beta. It only works on if I haven't done the infrastructure to uh, generate all of those hashes for all the releases yet uh, because we have to test keys, uh, the uh, HSMs are in the mail. Um, but yeah, it's in a testable state. And if, if you have a site that's uh, not composer managed uh, or doesn't have any other de uh, deployment workflow, uh, testing it would greatly be appreciated. 
uh, and the next phase will be uh, composer support. So something along the lines of uh, blue-green deployments, you know, have two code bases built out uh, with composer and uh, something to switch between the two when the new code base is ready. Uh, another project I've been I worked on quite a bit uh, a couple years back is uh, the issue credits. Um, so, you know, we've always been, Drupal's pretty much been crediting uh, people uh, from the start. Uh, this is the earliest one I could find, um, you know, used to be in the commit message, still is in the commit message. Um, but, uh, you know, we wanted to know a bit more about uh, where those commits were coming from. And, uh, you know, the commit message is also just code, not, the, uh, not other um, contributions as well. Uh, so, yeah, we wanted to find out if people were think, doing things on their own time or, or, or if organizations were sponsoring their work uh, and what organizations were leading contributors. Uh, so project maintainers credit people on, uh, on each issue, uh, and then people uh, who are doing the work on the issue, commenting on the issue, uh, at, attribute that credit to organizations if they'd like. Uh, the underlying implementation, it's all a pile of entity references. Uh, and the way the implementation, implementation went is uh, each comment is a good place to uh, kind of hang the attribution uh, as, as you work. Uh, so you've probably seen on, uh, if you have updated an issue on Drupal.org, there's a couple of fields to say which organization it's for or if you're working as a volunteer. Uh, and then since the organization data, that's all associated with comments, uh, the actual credit that the maintainer grants is stored as NTD references to each of those comments. Uh, so uh, you know, when the project maintainer ticks the checkbox to credit someone, uh, underneath it actually stores uh, you know, all of those comment IDs. Uh, and you know, so if someone switches their attribution halfway through an issue, uh, you know, switch from volunteer to uh, working for an organization or to organization to a different organization. Um, everything gets aggregated uh, to credit everyone in every organization. Uh, so uh, there's a couple more bits in the field storage, uh, like the uh, storing the checkbox to store if it's a volunteer or not, uh, and uh, entity reference field, another entity reference field to call out if uh, the organization was a end, end customer. Uh, so it makes some fun queries for reports. Uh, this is one of the smaller ones I found, just the last thing that uh, was in my command line history for the MySQL. Uh, and sent to the, uh, since this issue credit rather than something on a git commit, uh, it's ended up uh, people have figured out they can use it for crediting uh, non-code work. Uh, so seeing conferences um, uh, credit all of their speakers, organizers, and uh, people working on organizing, communicating, documenting things uh, need, doc uh, need recognition too. Uh, and we totally didn't plan on this use of the uh, issue credit system. Uh, it's just something people figured out in the last year or so. Uh, and uh, a, there's a page on drupal.org, drupal.org slash metrics. Uh, it has a couple, has a few graphs uh, like this and some of, the, some of them are less useful for the, than this. Uh, like it has a graph of how many users were created by month. Uh, and that doesn't really say a whole lot because um, Honestly, most of the users who register for Drupal.org are spammers, and it's, it's a massive overcount. Uh, but this is uh, so stuff like issue credit. That gives us a chance to uh, count up what's uh, like an actual tangible. Someone did something, and a maintainer recognized it and said, this is good. Uh, so yeah, all of these graphs can be found on drupal.org slash metrics. Uh, I just added this one two days ago, I think. And uh, yeah, basically this uh, shows uh, which region of the world uh, contributions are coming from. Uh, 
Uh, and in 2018, we added uh, privately sharing, uh, if you were a member of an under underrepresented community, uh, so stuff like um, if, you're, uh, if your race is a minority in your field and location, or if you're a woman in a male dominated industry. Also, you know, there's 10 categories. There's some that you would not think of as diversity right away, like age and socioeconomic status. Uh, so these are all self-reported on your Drupal.org profile. Uh, this is probably no undercount since it was just added uh, last year. Um, but uh, yeah, we've always had kind of superficial stats, like how many uh, people identify as women are con contributing, but this lets, lets us get into more detail. And of course, it's all kept uh, confidential. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, rounding that goes into this graph. Uh, we're pretty careful about reporting to um, make sure no one can reverse engineer the data. And uh, finally, the uh, actually how, how much contribution is from organizations. Uh, so, uh, you know, looking to encourage uh, organizations to contribute uh, in, in constructive ways. Uh, you know, Dries is, uh, has his blog post uh, about makers and takers, more makers. Uh, and, you know, of course, uh, Contributions to organizations get uh, shown on your organization page on Drupal.org, uh, with along, along with a few other factors. That that's how we rank the marketplace listings. Uh, those used to be alphabetical, uh, so even if the system we have now isn't isn't perfect, uh, it's not alphabetical. Uh, so, yeah, we're look, looking for. Uh, promoting organizations, uh, making time for their employees to contribute back and uh, show they're, they're a good place to work. Uh, and right now we're working on uh, recognizing more types of contribution uh, because uh, issue queue is still very, it's usually code contributions, um, stuff like uh, tagging releases, more, uh, more formally recognizing the time it takes to, to organize an event. Um, it takes a huge, I mean, a huge amount of effort to get put on an event like this. Uh, and you know, just one commit credit is not, or issue credit is not really enough. Uh, running initiatives uh, and other working groups, uh, those all deserve credit. Uh, and we're thinking about how doing some weighting. Uh, con some contributions are more impactful than others. Uh, and the weighting, that, that'd be mostly uh, if, all for ranking organizations. We're not in the business of ranking people, uh, making a leaderboard of uh, who does the most. But organizations, yeah, we can have them uh, being a leaderboard and do a bit of competition. Uh, and uh, yeah, my boss is working on uh, work, uh, the contribution recognition committee, uh, committee uh, to kind of be a independent-ish uh, board to review these additions and the weighting so it's not just the association uh, doing something. Um, you know, the, uh, for example, the Drupal cons, that's uh, the session selection. That's not done by the association directly. That's uh, volunteers um, figuring out which sessions are selected for Drupal cons. Uh, I'll quickly go through a couple other things that we're working on right now. Uh, the upcoming Drupal 9 release is promoting some work. Uh, so Composer support, getting that actually um, fully into core uh, and making packaged releases Composer ready. Uh, my coworker, uh, Ryan uh, Mixologic, he's the lead on that. Uh, so yeah, look for the Composer initiative. Uh, they, they got a lot of good stuff done. Uh, semantic versioning for Contrib. Um, so Drupal, Drupal modules, Drupal themes, they're not uh, just compatible with Drupal 8 or Drupal uh, 9 anymore. Uh, Drupal 9, 8 modules today can be compatible with 8 and, 8 and 9 or like 8.7.3 to 9.2. Uh, there's not that first bit of the version number. That doesn't matter anymore. 
Uh, so we're taking that, up, taking that away and at the same time uh, doing semantic versioning. Uh, so adding the last uh, patch version number. Uh, so hopefully we'll get that launched uh, probably next quarter uh, at some point. Uh, if Uh, issue forking, uh, that's uh, something, made a, I made quite a bit of progress on that, uh, and then the Drupal 9 stuff, uh, we realized that was more important. Uh, but I have this working on dev and staging, uh, basically a button on the issue to uh, make a fork uh, for, the, uh, for working on that issue. And... Um, the thing that will be unique about uh, the forks we do on Drupal.org uh, as compared to GitLab, uh, the main site, uh, and GitHub is uh, from the start, it'll be collaborative. Uh, it's not just one person working on one merge request. It's uh, <clears throat> anyone with access to, uh, anyone who's agreed to the Git access agreement will be able to uh, clone it and work on it and push to it. Uh, so we have the forks ready, all of that access control. You know, Git makes it easy to overwrite each other's work accidentally. Uh, and you know, just saying like use the ref log is not an adequate answer for if someone's lost their work. Um, so figuring out all the, all the permissions uh, is the next step. Uh, and we have to update all these sites to uh, Drupal 8 and Drupal 9 uh, at some point uh, pretty soon. Uh, and you know, we still have groups, the Drupal 6 site. Uh, right now, we're looking to c clean up some of the technical debt, uh, stuff like uh, the Drupal 9 uh, landing page, the kind of thing we use to market Drupal, uh, actually, the Drupal 8 landing page. Uh, built a whole separate theme for the landing page of, for Drupal 8. So we have two themes that look pretty much like each other. Um, uh, jobs is a separate theme. So uh, maybe we can reduce our, our debt there. Uh, and yeah, it's, it'll be much easier to migrate uh, stuff when there's less, uh, less of it to do. Uh, Another example, the association site, that's really just old blog posts. Uh, the new blog posts all go to a section on Drupal.org itself. Uh, we just use it for the elections, uh, and um, maybe we could use a third-party service if we find one we trust, um, and just get rid of the whole site, and then we don't have to migrate it. Let's see. Oh, and uh, for... Um, for Drupal.org itself, last time we did an upgrade, uh, it was a 24-hour so downtime. Uh, we don't want to do that again if we don't have to, uh, so we'll have to figure out uh, some sort of incremental migration uh, for Drupal.org um, to um, make that uh, kind of like the GitLab migration. The GitLab migration was 10 minutes of downtime when we, uh, it was an incremental migration, and then we, uh, flipped over to GitLab, and there was one project that had committed in the last five minutes that hadn't been, uh, migra um, hadn't been updated, so we uh, got that moved over and everything, switched everything on it, it works pretty well. <clears throat> so uh, that's some of the work I'm doing, that my team's doing uh, around the Drupal Association. Um, you know, there's also the, all the day-to-day -day stuff, like this morning, I cleaned up a little bit of spam. All my coworkers who might do that are on vacation for the holiday. Uh, I resynced a Git repository, commits to Drupal.org. Drupal.org has a database of all of the, um, all of the commit data, uh, which is useful for uh, queries and integrating everything. Uh, and looked into uh, provisioning a AWS service for uh, helping out with the signing server for automatic updates. And uh, yeah, it all doesn't come for free. I'm a full-time employee. My coworkers uh, also get paid. Uh, and we have all these services we use. Uh, a lot of these are free. A lot of them, they've given us a deal as a nonprofit. Um, but you know, there's a few we just pay for uh, because they're, they're worth it. 
uh, stuff like uh, Datadog for monitoring and logging, uh, Slack and Zoom, because we like talking to each other, um, and uh, Zendesk for help at, help at Drupal.org. Uh, and all of this runs on uh, 11 physical servers, probably more than that. We have a few that uh, are just kind of hanging out. They've been powered off. Uh, uh, they're pretty old, but I think 11 or more um, active ones uh, that are at the Oregon State uh, University Open Source Lab. Um, haven't needed to buy any in a few years. They've got uh, these provisioned uh, pretty well, and um, you know, PHP updates keep making things faster. MySQL updates keep making things faster, uh, and. Uh, everything's on virtual machines ex except for the uh, database and media servers. Uh, media servers are the files directory. Uh, so we're relatively portable for moving stuff around. Uh, if, you ever want to, if we ever uh, need to migrate to the cloud or anything, uh, we should be relatively ready to do that. And um, you know, we have the hardware. It's free for now, uh, essentially. The uh, open source lab, the uh, they charge a few data center fees, but they, they give us a pretty good deal as an open source project. Uh, and there's the rest of the uh, team. So we're four people out of the uh, 17 on staff of the association. We also uh, um, uh, produce DrupalCons. Uh, uh, sorry, we haven't had one close to Australia lately, but uh, the Amsterdam was a bit of an experiment with uh, handing over a lot of the responsibility for conference organizing to a company called Quoni. And you know, up until the event, we were honestly not sure about it, but it turned out uh, pretty great. So uh, now we know a bit more, um, a bit more about the effort we need to put in for a, having a third party organize the conference and, conference, and we could do more of them potentially. Uh, and yeah, go more places outside of North America and uh, Europe. And uh, we're just doing stuff like promote, uh, promote, promote Drupal. Uh, so coordinating um, Drupal branding and marketing. Um, they have a whole initiative to um, build decks and marketing material. So uh, I believe that's um, in the state where they have a, you know, a pitch deck for Drupal and are looking to get that translated to more uh, more languages. Uh, so the ways to support us, uh, membership is the easiest uh, way to support us financially, it's either as an individual or organization. Um, starts pretty affordable rates, can pay uh, as much as uh, sliding scale for membership. And organizations, uh, the supporting partners, uh, they their budget, or money we get from supporting partners, that's directly earmarked for supporting Drupal.org. Um, so that's the way to uh, support. Um, if you're an organization with a, that relies on Drupal, or always looking for, for more supporting partners. Uh, thanks, previous next morph catalyst. Those are the ones I saw from the region. Uh, and there's other benefits, uh, like increased visibility around Drupal.org, uh, a boost in the mar Drupal.org marketplace rankings. So thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, if there's something you want to work on, uh, I'll be around. You can use my contact form on Drupal.org or find me on Slack, and thanks. Thank you, Neil. Got your prize. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, I think Neil may win the award for traveling the furthest to get here, even if it's not the longest. Uh, he came all the way from Brooklyn <clears throat> to Tasmania. Um, so thanks for showing us under the hood of Drupal.org. Um, as I might have mentioned yesterday, I've been uh, lucky to have been appointed to the Drupal Association Board. Uh, which I just started last month, taking over from all the work that Donna Benjamin had done previously in this region. And I think the exciting thing is, is that there's a lot of work now happening at a global coordination level. There's Rachel Norfolk, who's the uh, community liaison manager, 
um, who's starting to get us as local associations talking to each other, sharing best practices. I found myself sitting on the phone to Colombia the other day, sharing what we've been doing at Drupal South and how that might transfer across to them. And likewise, we had some great interactions with Drupal uh, Association Netherlands and ideas that are directly translatable here. Um, I have also been appointed to the Revenue Committee, so I'm going to reiterate what um, Neil said around uh, individual and organisation membership. Uh, without Drupal.org, we would not be all working together and being able to contribute and collaborate. And all of that money does go straight back into the project. Uh, and also, as supporting partners, it does mean that your profile within the Drupal.org marketplace does get enhanced. And uh, what I would like to mention as well, we do have DrupalCon Minneapolis coming up in May 2020. Uh, if you like prints and Drupal, there's a Venn diagram for, for that, <laughs> for you to come and attend. Um, but session submissions for Minneapolis close on December the 4th. And uh, if you do need travel assistance to make your way there, there's a very well-structured scholarship program uh, to help fund getting you over there. Um, I know Suchi Garg made it to Amsterdam on one of those uh, scholarships. So uh, that, that's definitely available for all of you. And there will be another DrupalCon Europe, which will be announced shortly, uh, most likely towards the end of 2020. Um, a little bit of housekeeping again. Uh, all of the sessions uh, that have been completed, they have a little feedback form at the bottom of them. Like I said yesterday, that feedback helps people uh, get an understanding of how their talk was received and improved for, for future times. Uh, lightning talks, we'll be having them after the second keynote today uh, at about 4.15. And there's still a box available there if you wanted to submit one of them. And after the keynote this afternoon, there's going to be an after party uh, sponsored by Pantheon at the Shambles Brewery in Elizabeth Street. And again, I'd just like to thank Greg and Ice Media for sponsoring uh, Neil to come all the way here to give his talk today. And one final fun thing, because we had so much fun doing a photo yesterday, we're going to do another one. Uh, so this time we've worked out how to actually get onto the balcony outside. So. Uh, I'd like you to all get up, go out to the escalator, down the escalator and turn right onto the forecourt where the flags are and there'll be someone on the balcony directing you so that we can take another group photo. Thanks for your patience.